everybody and welcome to From This Corner TV. I'm Marilyn Dayton and I'm back and um, I've got another great show for you. And I want to remind you too that we're not here just to entertain you, but also to talk about topics that both interest you and educate you. Now before we start, um, I feel that I would like to say something. Uh, I would like to, to pray for the refugees from the war-torn and poverty-stricken nations in the Middle East and Africa and hope the European Union can provide safe homes for them. This is not a political topic. It is a humanitarian issue. I don't talk about politics. So, um, okay. Today, we've got a great show. We've got my friend, uh, Susan Epstein, and she's a parenting coach an author, this is going to take a while, okay, a speaker <laughs> and a business coach for therapists and parents. Uh, Susan chose to leave her successful 23-year psychotherapy practice to launch her parent coach business in 2007. And she just told me she had a show, too, a couple of years after that. Uh, Susan began coaching parents to successfully manage children and adolescents with challenging and resistant behaviors. So uh, while you're listening to this, get out your pen and paper, okay? Because we all have children, grandchildren, friends of theirs that we may want to take down some notes. She created information products, and she's got some of them with us, with her today. And she's been traveling the country as a national speaker, uh, well over 200 venues. And she's been on local TV, too. Uh, Susan has mm -hmm. sold over 10,000 books and products and she continues to write books and update them and also do videos. And so we're blessed to have you on this show, Susan. Thank you so much for coming on our show. I'm so excited. Thank you, Marilyn. I am thrilled to be here. I'm so just, honored to be with you. Oh, thank yes. you, thank you. I've known you for years and um, I did some research, uh, as I always do, like a, a regular guest, you know, mm -hmm. I did some research and Gosh, you know, she's, uh, she's kind of all over the place out there. She um, is a resource for magazines like Parents. Uh, I saw the one that's the 10 first year games for you and your baby. And she's listed in a New York magazine, the outsourced parent section, as a teen life coach. And it's just, it goes on from there. And I feel very privileged to have you on my show. Thanks this again. is going to be so interesting. Yeah. So great. Um, let's, let's get to some issues that okay. I know our audience has an interest in, and myself too. Uh, let's say a parent is working from home, okay, and they've got children at home. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to balance this, and they're trying to keep from being interrupted, and it's, it's kind of a challenge when you've got little ones at home. Yes. So what kind of things would you advise people to, to make it easier for them? That's a f fabulous question. I was one of those mothers because oh. I had my practice at home, my private practice. So I had to actually, I had to walk that before I could talk it. I guess you did. And um, recently, actually, in the past year, I've worked with a couple of moms who had, that was just one of many issues that they had. Um, and so there's a couple things you can do. One is to um, work only when your kids are in school and get really good at time management so that you can be there after 3 o'clock and not be interrupted. And put your phone, you know, put your phone, you put your computer away. I met a woman last night at a networking event, and she said, I only work from 10 to 2. And she has a successful coaching business. And wow. she's just set her hours around that, and she's really purposeful, and she's fo highly focused because she knows that she wants to be there in the morning to get her daughter after school, and she wants to be there after school to be there with her daughter full time. And she just sets those limits. The, other, the third thing, it's really important that you have a space that's dedicated for your office. And this, I'm thinking of this one mother I was working with, and she was um, a graphic designer. And she had three little girls, and she is working in her living room, like the desk is in the middle of the living room, Oh, wow. And the whole time, we're doing um, Skype calls for the coaching. <laughs> and the whole time we're doing it, she's trying to talk to me, and they're walking in. Mommy, Mommy, I need this. I need that. And, and she said, this is basically my day when I'm trying to work with a client or whatever. And so, very simply, um, I told her to um, go out and get a, um, what you call it, a, a room divider. Mm -hmm. um, and 
stick it at the, because there was no door. It was a beautiful um, colonial home, and it had a beautiful round arch. <laughs> but there was no way to put a door on it, so she didn't have, a, and there was no other place in the house for her to have her office. Oh, wow. So they got um, a screen, a screen, and she put it up, and we, um, the kids helped her make a sign, and it said, Mommy is working, Mommy is not working. And in the morning when she was working, she flipped the sign to Mommy is working, and she, we taught the kids within two or three days to respect the sign and that they couldn't go past the sign when Mommy was working. Wow. So those are just a few, a few simple tips that you can do if you are working at home. You know, that's, yeah. that's great because um, I live with my daughter and grandkids, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's an adventure because my space is kind of shared with the game room, mm -hmm. the Wii room, right. uh, mm -hmm. the other TV room, and um, I'm in a, a wide hallway as where my desk is and what I do is I, I plug in my earphones to my computer put Pandora on and I do my work mm -hmm. but it's kind of hard to have phone calls yeah so um, what I do is at the top of the stairs if I close the door that means Grammy is on a conference call right and they know that so you set your boundary yeah, yeah I had so you to talk. so yeah. that's simple but yeah. it's kind of hard what yeah. if you've got uh, what about, like, I mean, 10 to 2 or even 10 to 3, that's not, well, she must be very organized. Oh, yeah, and I wow. think her daughter's 5, um, so when she comes home from school, you know, dinner, and she's probably working probably after 7.30 when she pops her in bed. Oh, yeah. And again, you have yeah. to have a really great early bedtime for little kids anyway, which is super mm -hmm. important, and you can actually grab an extra hour or two at night if you needed to as a parent who's working from home you know maybe from 8 to 10 if you had to write emails or get on a call with somebody yeah it's absolutely doable well now that yeah. we know it's doable yes maybe uh, so many people work from home today uh, you probably do too and maybe both of you do and you've got the kids mm -hmm. and because um, I know uh, my son-in-law sometimes works from home but he's way upstairs in the office, which is off the master bedroom, yeah. and there's a door. <laughs> there's actually two doors that he can close, and the kids just don't bother him at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's other kids around uh, and they're, they take over the house, they're running around and they're making noise, uh, either my daughter or myself have to have kind to of go up and down. say, okay, guys, back down in Grammy's space. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. We do it. We have to do it. At least right. summer is over. Yes. So that helps a little bit. <laughs> yeah. There's school. Back to school. More yes. time alone. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, what about, let's talk about technology. Mm. Now, technology is not just uh, a challenge with children. It's a challenge with adults. It just seems like we pick up our phones and we're, uh, we're on the phone so much. Which is a good thing sometimes because maybe somebody has to stay after school or there's a problem and somebody needs their phone to connect. But what about the children that are now so used to texting and instead they can be sitting at the same table. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter has told me this. Right. They're sitting at the same table and they're texting across the table back and forth. Yeah. This is a, not a very good trend. No, and we, um, we have to band together as families to create unplugged time because we, parents, if you want your child not to, then you can't. And well, so we yeah. have to look at our own behavior. And I talk to parents all the time. I say, you know, would you be willing to throw your phone in the trunk of the car and drive? And people look horrified when I say that. I said, well, you know, 15 years ago, there was no such thing as a cell phone. Well, maybe there was, but those were the kind in the bag that you plugged into the... Yeah. <laughs> remember that one? I remember. <laughs> it was like this big... <laughs> it was. <laughs> um, um, but it was just for 911, you know, it was not for, like, yeah. any kind of uh, personal connection at all. You, exactly. you didn't want to have to use that phone. It would cost you $15 to make oh the call. Oh, my God, yeah. Right? <laughs> but we have a world now where it's not just the... It's not just talking on the phone. It's our email comes through there, a Facebook, uh, all social networking, like you said, the texting. So one of the strategies that I developed um, for families that I work with is to create a Dropbox, uh, not the Dropbox.com Dropbox, mm -hmm. but a Dropbox on a kitchen counter 
that says cell phone tablets place here with a charger or something inside it so everybody can plug. And when the kids walk in after school, uh, all the phones go in, mm -hmm. including mom's, if she's going to help them with their homework or be available, you know, and you want to be available. Of course. Um, and then after dinner, when the homework is done and the bath is over or whatever chores need to be done, you can have your phone back until bedtime. And then at bedtime, the phones go back in the box. And that way we have a dinner where we're actually talking to each other and we're not all on our phones at the table going like this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it has to be a consensual like habit that the family all decides together to do it. And that will be the, I believe, the only way to show kids that they can be unplugged and have meaningful relationships because we can't say get off your phone when we're on ours. That's it's right. just impossible. Yeah. yeah. I know we have a rule that um, when we're sitting and having a meal, we talk. Right. Face to face. Right. The, the thing is, and I'm, um, USA Today calls it cultural autism. Yes. And I thought, that's kind of a powerful statement. Yeah. Well, you children know? are afraid. I have parents that, that I work with that tell me my daughter or my son is afraid to make, to call up and make a hair appointment. Well, can't we just make it online? Like, they're so trained to do everything without having to deal with people that they're afraid to talk to people they don't know and to ask for what they need in person. I mean, a lot of people don't even go shopping anymore. They just order everything online and have everything delivered. So how is a child going to even learn to, you know, take something off a rack and go to a register and pay for it and have that experience? This is, a lot of this stuff is shrinking. It's, it's going away because our lives have ma been made so easy because of technology. And some of it's really fantastic and it's awesome. Oh, you know, yeah. I want to order a book. I can have it, you know, I can have it in 24 hours at my door. Mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, yeah, it's that's pretty easy. It is. You know, and if I don't even want the physical copy of it, I can have it delivered to my iPad, right? So my Kindle, whatever it, yeah, what that is. So, exactly. so and, and that's great because information, we want, it, we want information, we want to learn. We can have that stuff immediately, but children need to learn social skills. And if we can't model that for them, how are they going to learn that? Well, it, and it even goes beyond that. Um, so many kids today work on computers, so yeah. they're typing yeah. their reports in, they're typing things in, and uh, I was reading an article that said that uh, they're not even teaching cursive yeah. as much in school anymore. And I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've gone away from, if you've ever looked at um, if you've gone to a museum and you've mm -hmm. seen any of these old documents, whether it's the Declaration of Independence or something else, and the writing, the beautiful swirly yeah. writing that, um, that w human beings used to do, and now they're just going to type it into a computer and... You know, it's interesting that you said that because I'm on the computer a lot too because I do a lot of writing, I, I do a lot of emailing, I do a lot of work on the computer, you know, pretty much all day. And occasionally, I do most of my banking online too, right? Yeah. But occasionally course. there's certain things I have to write a check for. And sometimes when I put the pen in my hand and I go to write the check, my hand's not working the way it used, it used to. to. Does that yeah. happen to you? I, I feel like, like there's something, the motor skill, something's off where I go to write, you know, the number, and mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, why, why did I make it, my hand's just not working the way it's supposed to work, and I think it's because I'm not using that skill, mm -hmm. I'm not using the hand to the mind as much as I'm doing, you know, the typing. So I think it, we do have to take care of that if we want to preserve it. We do. Yeah. We do. And I've noticed that my, uh, my mm -hmm. cursive yeah. skills uh, have depleted or just playing gotten worse and it's like yeah. chicken scratches and so I've you know I've gone Working back when I was it. writing this yeah. note to myself yeah. I actually wrote it on a napkin first because yeah. <laughs> I was having lunch and and, mm -hmm. and I thought oh I should really you know say this on the program yeah. and I had to almost print it so I could read it tonight yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is you know close to cursive but yeah, my swirlies uh, yeah. are no longer we, there. We gotta, we gotta work on this. Yeah, stuff, we've, yeah. we've <laughs> got to, and it does. It feels really kind of weird. To have a pen Pick in up your, your hand. pen or your pencil. And mm -hmm. Does it still feel normal to you? 
Mm -hmm. we're, we, we're going to have a lost skill here, people, <laughs> unless we do something. <laughs> so many oh. people get out their cell phones. You know, there's the notes, right. the reminders right. and stuff. And when you say to someone, oh, here's a good book to read, they get out their phone and they put it in there because right. we don't carry around you know, pad pads, and, anymore, pads right. and pens. Mm -hmm. I'm packing for a trip I'm taking tomorrow morning. I've got a pad and a pen I'm going to have right in my purse. Yeah. Because I was discovering mm -hmm. <laughs> I need I to do that more. That's right. But if you don't learn it in school, yeah. you won't know it. No. And another thing that I'm kind of concerned about is, uh, well, we don't really have that problem in our house because my grandchildren are very expressive, especially the little guy. <laughs> but I've noticed that um, some of the kids, that they're more almost monotone acting and mm -hmm. monotone talking. Yeah. And, um, and my granddaughter had a drama club um, just a, a get together to see what it was like at, at the high school last last night uh, or the night before, and uh, it seemed to take forever. <laughs> so, but I noticed that some of the kids, very quiet voices, as the first time ones, very quiet and um, not very expressive, kind of monotone, and they're. You know, the drama teacher says, you know, we're going to work on that. That's what we're going to do. And I thought, yes, somebody's got to work on yeah. that, you know. Yeah. And the ones that have been in drama club for a while, mm -hmm. you know, they're used to it. They're right. speaking out and stuff. And another thing that she said, the drama teacher, she said, okay, here's one of the rules and regulations. Some of the teachers have done this. They've ordered these, these pocket holder yep. things that they hang on the wall. You come into the room. Your cell phone goes in those pockets, right. okay? You turn off the sound, and then you stick it in those pockets, mm -hmm. and when you leave, you grab your cell That's phone. That's right. And I thought, great, because you've got to control it mm -hmm. somehow. But you're right, it does kind of sort of start at home. I think I was seeing um, the other night, I watched 60 Minutes, and uh, Anderson Cooper had gone to mindfulness training with uh, Kabat-Zinn, Famous, mm -hmm. famous guy. He, he actually goes to Google and he teaches meditation and they all have meditation meetings before they start their work day. Oh, that's and they so all great. have to drop their phones in one of those um, pockets at Google mm -hmm. <laughs> before they start work. And they have their three-minute meditation together and then they can go get their phones at Google. Wow. Isn't that cool? That is. That's very cool. Yeah. We should all do that, okay? Yes. You can use a um, over-the-door shoe Mm -hmm. thing and that oh, yeah. has the pockets the plastic pockets you can go buy them yeah, oh, anywhere yeah, yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. so many people uh, like even in your workplace this might be a good idea for your workplace because mm -hmm. uh, I know some I've heard a few stories here and there mm. uh, about you know how do I keep my employees from going on their phone all the time you know, how do I... You take them away. <laughs> yeah, that's how you police that. Right, right. And it's the same thing when, um, if you give them rules mm -hmm. to follow. The problem is, um, we can't help it. There's um, a, a hormone released in our brain. It's the same one that when you go to the slot machines. Oh. That's what happens. That's why we keep checking our email. Um, people check their email a hundred times a day because, oh my God, did I get something? Or we used to, when we were kids, run to the mailbox to see if the mailman came yet. Right? Oh, yeah. It's the same, what am I going to get? Am I going to get something? And the brain wants to get something. It wants that immediate gratification. So that's why we check our, our email and our Facebook all day long. And unless you remove the object, you can't tell people not to do it. They won't be able to. They'll just be like, it's almost painful. Oh, wow. I've actually done some of these when I do these seminars that I, when I travel around the country, I'll say like, you know, I know you're all going to be on your phone all day, like while I'm talking to you. And some of you are going to pretend and you're going to put it like your hands underneath the tablecloth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, but like, what if we just did an experiment and we just l said, let's just try for the next 60 minutes that you don't touch your phone and the looks on the faces oh. are, it's excruciating pain. They just can't imagine not being able to check their email because it's the the brain it's like an addiction yeah that's what it is and that's why we can't demand our children stop wow. unless we remove it it's the only way is removal 
Apple who Great got the, the, yeah. the new, you know, I mean, te technology the is Apple just watch? moving yeah. right along. <laughs> the, the Apple Watch. Right. That, you know, you're in the bathtub relaxing. I saw one of the commercials. Somebody in the bathtub relaxing. Oh, yeah, I can check my email. Oh, please. <laughs> we went to the beach this weekend, you know, mm -hmm. Labor Day weekend. It was so beautiful. And I just wanted peace and quiet. And a woman was on the beach talking to some dot-com that she had ordered something for for her car and she was fighting with them on um, on Saturday or Sunday for like a half an hour arguing with them about a $30 charge in the middle of the beach you know what I mean like yeah we're on the beach yeah like, that's supposed like, to be relaxation. She was and doing business. She was like on the phone fighting. <laughs> she was getting mad. You could see like she was trying not to lose it, but she was, she kept repeating herself, you know, asserting herself and repeating herself. But I didn't, I mean, I've certainly had those conversations in the privacy of my home with mm -hmm. some company that's, you know, taking my money on a subscription or something like that, that you have to get out of, but oh, not yeah. in the middle of Labor Day weekend on the beach. That surrounded sort of spoiled, by people. spoiled my nature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Surrounded by people that don't want to hear yeah. this. Right. Exactly. It's so there's like, people don't care what their, there's no um, privacy around their own noise. You know, I think that's. They're not being they're considerate. Not, they're, there you go. Cultural autism. Yeah. Yeah. They're in their own worlds and they don't see the impact of their behaviors on other people. Wow. That's yeah. kind of a scary trend too. Yeah. Has anybody ever bumped into you while they were working, while reading their phone in the middle of the supermarket? Boom! <laughs> <laughs> Crashed their cart into you because <laughs> that hasn't happened to me, but I could picture it. It will. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it right, will. Right. You know, it's it's. Mm. You know, I love shows that show funny things. You know, funny <laughs> animals, funny babies, right. funny, uh, interesting things like someone walking along on their mm. phone and they fall in a construction <laughs> hole because they're on the phone and you laugh yeah. but it's kind of sad it happens i know yeah it does yeah. kind of makes you wonder where are we going mm. but let's get back to um parenting yes parenting never stops does no. it no look at you yeah i know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, it was yeah. um uh, Mm. It was my son's birthday, birthday number 45, earlier part of this week. And he ended up calling me for some reason. He lives and works in Japan. So he sleeps while I'm awake. I sleep while he's awake. But we kind of, there's, there's a, a little window. bit of, <laughs> there's a window of time because he stays up till one or two in the morning and then gets up, goes to work at seven or eight. Yes. But um, I'm not going to get on his back about that. He's a grown up guy. Mm -hmm. But he was talking about some things that he uh, is going to be doing, and mother kicks in, you know. Well, make sure you do that before this date, because why do we do that? We, we just can't help ourselves. One, if we can't no. help ourselves. No. <laughs> Here we go again. We can't help ourselves. Right. <laughs> but it's being a good oh, mother. Absolutely. Be, be caring. Mm -hmm. and, and it... it you know, and, and guiding, I, and, and I, know. but I yeah. stopped, and I said, "Oh, here's mother." <laughs> I said, "I sure sound like mom, don't I?" He says, "Yeah." He says, "It's okay. I like it." Aww, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't. It doesn't end. Mm -hmm. But what about grandparents who mm -hmm. want to help parent? That's that's kind of something I've I've. There's uh, a lot of grandparents these days raising children. There are. There's a whole group of them, like a lot of them. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of them reach out to me via email and ask me questions specifically around that. It's got to mm -hmm. be difficult because there's a generation in between. Yes. And so many things happen from generation mm -hmm. to generation. Right. I mean, it's different if you're living three generations together like you are mm -hmm. versus somebody who ended up raising their kids' kids because the, their own child is incapacitated or not available or gone or dead mm -hmm. or in jail or on drugs or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do they normally, um, do they normally end up adopting the children, a lot of them? I don't know. No. I mean, probably. 
Beca because, you know, yeah, you know, know, we talk about the power right, yeah. of parenting, yeah, but the power of grandparenting, mm -hmm. and wh what are the borders? You know, yeah. what are the boundaries? And you know, if you're just taking care of children, yeah. what are your rights? How do we find yeah. out what the rights are? My parents helped me so much with my kids. You know, my mother took my kids in the summer when I was, I was still working at a job job mm -hmm. and she would take them to the beach all summer long. They could have friends over. My parents live around the corner from us. They really helped us, you know, and um, yeah. I couldn't have really, I, I mean, I had a babysitter and everything too, but my kids grow, grew, you know, grew up knowing their grandparents really, really well. And if we went away, they would always take them and it was a great relationship and I'm sure they were always happy to give them back. You know, well, at the end of the day, because, yeah. you know, it's back to whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think that if you have a good relationship with your kids' ki your kids and your grandchildren, then you're mm -hmm. in a good place. And, and I, I don't know. I don't deal with too many people that are having those issues. Um, uh -huh. Most people that contact me, it's more like the child's out of control. The parenting has not been going very well. Um, grandparents are eager to help. And they want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. Yeah, that's been my experience. Yeah, yeah, we do. We want to help, yeah. but it's it's always a question: When do I open my mouth and say something? Mm -hmm. And do I say it in front of the child, or do I take my my daughter? It or depends son on what your arrangement aside. is with your son, with your daughter, and your son-in-law. Do I have your permission to discipline them in front of you, or would you prefer that I take you to the side and let you know what they just did? I think it's always um, being respectful of the parents first, and they might say, "Go for it." Mm, yeah. <laughs> they might, they, uh, and certainly if you're alone with the kids, you've got to step in and do whatever it is to keep them safe and to tell them what they're supposed to be doing or not, or if they're disrespectful, to straighten that out. And mm -hmm. you know, but I think yeah. you can't err if you ask permission. And just mm -hmm. communication, then. Yes, communication is so important. Yeah, absolutely. So that you understand what's expected of you. Mm -hmm. I think that kind of applies to everything, doesn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh -huh. Write that down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophical moment. <laughs> yes. yes. <Woo> <laughs> nice. You're so lucky that you had mm. parents that wanted yeah. to... I, I never had that. Mm. And I was a single parent. But right. I had wonderful um, employees in my company that, you know, if I was traveling yeah. on business... And um, I would never go out of town overnight, though. Yeah. I couldn't. But, um, but somebody was always assigned to go pick up the kids at school, bring them into the office, and they'd go in the conference room to do homework, or they'd stuff envelopes or make copies, feel productive, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Nice. And, um, but we had rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. we, even had, uh, we even had a list of who had what responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Who was supposed to cook what night? Yep. Who was supposed to do laundry? Mm -hmm. Who was supposed to vacuum? Mm -hmm. I was on there. My kids were on there. And we just knew what our expectations were. That's right. And that's the only way we could make it work. And uh, my, my grandchildren, they have their drawers. They know. They know. Mm -hmm. And when we have company and uh, we're all eating dinner, yeah. and the kids say, okay, I'll take these three, you take those three, and they clear the table because that's their that's job. That's their job. And it's just automatic now. They don't love question it. it. I they love don't that. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. That's my daughter. Yeah. My daughter did Well, that. you're there too. <laughs> you're her mother. Well, yeah. It's and she big remembers. Big influence that. Yeah. Yes, of course she does. <laughs> but so many. Mm -hmm. um, do you get people that call you or contact you and say, okay, my child's best friend is disrespectful disrespectful and rude to me when they're in my house. I've heard that, but people wouldn't call me. Oh. <laughs> they what wouldn't, should they they do? wouldn't hire me to help them with a neighbor's <laughs> child. They would just probably not have that child over anymore because the child was disrespectful, right? Or um, call the parent and say, you know, your child's out of line and um, until your child can speak with me disrespectful, uh, respectfully, then I don't want them, uh, they're not welcome in my home. Which means that parent of that disrespectful mm -hmm. child, right. they should contact you. Well, yeah. To say, 
what am I going to do? Well, my, unfortunately, my, that parent probably is in denial. <laughs> uh, but, you know, yeah. that happens, too. What, what, yeah. What's wrong with my child, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that yeah. quite there's a bit, a, too. There's a book, something like, um, Shut Up About Your Perfect Child. <laughs> It's probably what they're saying. That you know, probably right? is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is yeah. a good spot to to take a little break, okay. and uh, and when we come when we come back, we're gonna do a little show and tell and talk some more with our wonderful guest. Thank you, Mary. Susan Epstein. We'll be right back. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be three point six seven nine five. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. My name is Namdi Asamoa. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? Hi, and we're back. I'm Marilyn Dayton, and this is From This Corner TV, and we're talking with Susan Epstein today. And uh, during the break, we were just talking about, um, you know, she started. you started working when you were 16. Yeah, I, wow. my first job uh, as like a social worker, I worked for TVCCA. Ah. And this was in the early 70s or mid 70s, and the job was called Crew Chief Counselor. <laughs> And we um, had kids from uh, low-income housing or something, and they would come into New London, and we would um, we were assigned a job for the summer. So I was assigned um, Nuestra Casa, which was a Latino organization in New London. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, we were supposed to paint their building. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like 16 years old with a group of 14-year-old kids. Wow. And th the money was probably federal money to keep people, to keep kids off the streets mm -hmm. during the Vietnam War. <laughs> oh, I think wow. that's where the money came from because they were sick of people rioting. So they said, well, if we employ these children, you know, then they won't be doing bad things like getting into trouble and doing drugs or whatever kids were doing or growing their hair long, whatever we were doing then. Yeah. And certainly not as bad as it is now, but, uh, but we thought it was. <laughs> So uh, every day we, in the summer we would go into that building and I would break another window or one of the kids would break another window because we would try to paint and our elbows would go through the windows oh. and I had to drive over to Ruby class. <laughs> but all I did was buy windows <laughs> and then somebody would put the window in and the place. I didn't know how to paint and I just like, you're so naive and, but oh, I loved yeah. working with the kids and then on Fridays we could take them on a field trip. And I took them to the Groton Airport, and we got to go on an airplane ride, and I took them to um, a factory, Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. and was was on, on uh, Bank Street, Upper Bank Street, and yeah. we, they got to see how the, the Coca-Cola bottles were filled, and exposing them to different job opportunities that they could have. That was sort of the purpose. So that was my getting my feet wet, and I'm like, this is cool, working with people. I really, really like this. And uh, when I went to college, I majored in sociology and Spanish and psychology, and 
did some more community work in Worcester, Mass, where I lived. And then when I graduated, my first job was with the Mass Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. And I was like a, you know, what they called a CPS or a DSS worker for like four years. Basically made home visits and helped parents in, in home with their kids and help mm -hmm. them keep their kids and not have their kids be taken away uh, for neglect or abuse. And uh, then I decided to go to grad graduate school, so I moved to California, went to Berkeley. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and uh, got that done. And then um, did a bunch of internships and different things like that. And then came back east and uh, worked at Child and Family in New London and became a play therapist. And then I had my own kids and I needed, I needed uh, to be home more and not be working. And it was like, and, and you don't make a lot of money when you're a social worker. So no. um, every penny I would have made, I would have paid in daycare. So oh I got into private practice with a group, and I um, built my practice there and became a play therapist and a family therapist, and for many, many years over, you know, now it's like crazy. It's like I still have, I do a little bit of that on the side, but not much. But, you know, over the years, I, I saw so many people and helped so many people with their children. And, um, and then in the early 2000s, I heard about coaching. And I thought, well, this is cool. I could help, like, more people and have a bigger impact on the world if I could talk to people on the phone, because then there would no be no geographic um, limitations. limitations. Yeah. Right, right. And then I started. Um, and ever since then, in 2007, I built my website, Parenting Powers, and started taking on clients all over the world. I virtually worked with people in many, many, many other countries um, over Skype and so forth over the years. Wow. Including the, U the United States, of course. Yeah. That's, that's quite a yeah. So you've always enjoyed Yeah, helping. always. Always, yeah. And, and focusing mm -hmm. kind of on children and... Families, yeah. Families, families. children. And it was interesting because it, when I had my own kids, I was like, I wanted to work with... Like when my son was four, I wanted to work with parents with four-year-olds. And then when my kids became teenagers, I was attracted to adolescents. And now, so over the years, I've actually done it all, you know, and worked yeah. with grandparents and, you know, and whole families. I like, I like that a lot. Because you can have a bigger impact um, if you have everybody in the room. And you can yeah. even do that on Skype. Yeah, all oh. the time. Yeah, kitchen table. There's Susan, Susan's head coming out of the computer talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Technology yeah. across the many See, miles. now that's good. Yeah, yes. yeah that is good yeah. technology. It mm -hmm. really is. Yeah. Helping people solve their problems. Absolutely. And another way that you help people are with these mm -hmm. books that you Yeah. So and the videos and yeah. everything. This is my first book. It's called uh, Taking Back Your Parenting Powers. First book. First book. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's the first book. I can't remember if that was the first book or this was the first book. Well, this is the first parenting manual oh, that I wrote. Okay. And this is the book that is, um, you know, how to feed them, how to put them to bed, how to oh, wow. take away the electronics and have... And, and I wrote this a long time ago, but it was, you know, the, all of that was starting, right? Um, how to work from, there's a chapter in here about um, how to work from home. Just what you asked oh, me before. Wow. There's a, a chapter in here about um, single parents, blended families, what happens when you get remarried, how does that step parent come in, and how do they discipline the child? I talk oh, about that wow. in here as well. Yeah. So that's a good book. People. Yeah, it's a good book. Yeah. Um, taking <laughs> back your parenting power system. Yeah. And people can um, can get this on your website. They can get it on my website. Oh, and wow. you know what's really cool about my website? What? Not only do you get the book when you get the book, but you get all kinds of extra stuff. Oh. Because I over deliver. So you get a slew of bonuses. Audios, interviews access to Facebook group, private Facebook groups. When you buy the book, you get a lot of extras, so you get contact with me. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's really cool. That is super. It's like a system. It's not just a book. It's the system, right? Well, yeah. you got to yeah. have the whole system. got to have a system. Mm -hmm. That is super. And, what um, else you got there? This is a children's book that I wrote um, with a friend of mine, um, Antoinette and Richard Ledzian. They're artists, and they live in uh, Stonington. Oh. And we wrote this together, and we self-published. And it's um, a book about loss, adoption, um, kitty cats, lobster traps, finding things in the sand, healing. <laughs> it's a little adventure for everyone. And um, th everyone always asks about the cover. Mm -hmm. um, Antoinette and I were down at Ocean Beach, and uh, she um, 
she's an artist. Yeah. So she's in the garbage can. Okay. And she's pulling out this painter's cloth. They had just painted um, the, um, the workout world that they had just put in there. This is oh. about eight years ago. And uh, she's like, this is really cool. This is beautiful. I, I need to have this. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm on the beach, like, I'm not looking at, you uh -huh. know, she's in the garbage can. And she takes it, and she scans it. Oh, and this wow. is the cover of our book, is the oh painter's my, cloth. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, yeah. look at that. Yes, and, and the theme um, of the cloth goes all the way through the book, where the little child in there is at the beach with the grandma, pulling the cloth out um, of the sand. And wow. in the end, the cat's wearing it around its neck, and it's just everywhere, and it's really sweet. Oh, yeah. that is, being a dumpster diva can yes, have its advantages. It can, it can. <laughs> and, That's um, super. We, we, um, she had a friend who was associated with the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New mm -hmm. York, and we used the, their printer for it. So it's all oh, green wow. and just beautiful paper, and it's just a nice feel oh, it to is. the book. It so, feels um, really good. <laughs> yeah. And I bring these on my travels, and I... And the therapists like to buy them, and parents like to buy them, and anybody who's had any loss or or likes cats will like it. I mean, it's got yeah. a lot of different themes in it as well. It does. Yeah. It mm -hmm. has enemies, mm -hmm. friends, unconditional love, yep. darkness, light. Oh, and they're visiting grandmother at the beach. They are. All right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's a beautiful book. That is yeah. super. Um, what else you got What there? else I got? Oh, uh, let's see. So, oh, this is fun. I wrote this little book with my son, Daniel. There he is on the back. Oh, look at that. Yep. Yeah. And um, I think we wrote this in 2010, and it's called Your Out of Control Teen, the Little Book with a Lot of Attitude. <laughs> oh, I love it. A Guide to Effective Parenting Communication. <laughs> so he wrote a chapter, and then I wrote a chapter, and he wrote a chapter, and I wrote a chapter, sort of like a talking to. Yeah. And so he talks to the teenagers. He's saying, like, listen to your mother. She knows what she's talking about. And he wanted it to be this small mm -hmm. so a teenager could walk around and have it in their pocket and their friends wouldn't make fun of them that they were reading something that might help them. That was his idea. Oh, that's a good idea. And he was um, 22 or 23 when we wrote this together, and he's 30 now. <laughs> oh, wow. So I love that little book. That's fun. I love the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this one, um, I did a seminar, um, I think in 2009 or 10. And uh, it was called, Are You Tired of Nagging? And I did it at Conn College. Wow. And uh, this came out of that. And uh, how to get your kids to cooperate and how to raise well-behaved children. And it's kind, of, it's kind of like the Take Back book, but it's a narrative form, and it's more um, of a book, not a manual. Ah, so okay. it's, um, a, and there's other things in here that aren't in that book. Some uh, techniques to get kids to cooperate that I did not put in that book. That's uh, sort of the one sheet. So that's what that is. And then um, in 2012, I was approached um, by a publisher. And so those I self-published. Mm -hmm. And um, we, um, I wrote this book. I can never say the title, so I'll have to turn it around and look at it because it's so <laughs> long. You know how they always name books with these very, very, very long titles? Can so you, you can read there. It says, yeah. Over 60 yeah. Techniques, yeah. Activities, and Worksheets yeah. for Challenging Children and Adolescents. Oh, I love the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this book is very, very, very popular. Um, this book is, um, I, I think, over 10,000 of just this book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, this book is... Um, the people I do the seminars for and I travel around the country, this is the book on the table when people go for trainings. I provide CEUs for therapists and teachers and so forth, mm -hmm. continuing ed units. And um, this is the book that is on almost every single child program for this company. Oh, and they wow. do 100 seminars a, a month all around the country. And a lot wow. of them are child-based. And then um, I didn't bring it because I don't have a copy of it because I sold it <laughs> <laughs> off my bookshelf. <laughs> but... Um, and a, a year later, they said, would you write another one? And I'm like, oh, I'll write it on dot, dot, dot. And they're, no, 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 no. Would you write 60 more? Oh, my goodness. And I rolled my eyes and said, how could I ever? I don't even know how to do that. Like, how would I? I don't even have that in my body to, like, even come up with. But he did it. And wow. then there was, si so there's 63, but it's called Over 55 because they didn't want to confuse the titles. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there's another book that you can see it on my website as well. Um, and these are, this is on Amazon, this one. 
Yep. Wow. And uh, this is, um, a lot of parents buy this book. A, a lot of therapists buy, bought it, but a lot of parents buy it because there's a lot of worksheets in here where you can figure out what you're doing, give your kids the worksheet, get clear on stuff. I have contracts in here. I have a contract for supervision that I have parents share with their kids when they're like 11 or 12 and they want to go to a friend's house by themselves or go to the mall. And so the contract's in here. Oh, wow. And you can just print it out and fill in the blanks. I will be home by such and such a time. If I don't, these are the consequences. And then I have the golden one is the driving contract. And that's in here. And I developed actually from my son. When he turned 16, we had mm -hmm. a contract. And these, you will fill up the gas tank. You will pay this much insurance. If you bring the car back dirty, this is what happens. If I catch you with anything that shouldn't be in that car, in that car, this is what's going to happen. And it was all spelled out, and we, we all knew where we were coming from. And There's that communication again. And you can save your child's life mm -hmm. with a supervision contract and with a driving contract. And they won't be mad at you when they mess up because they know. It's not between you and them anymore. It's between them and the piece of paper they signed because they so wanted the keys. That's right. Right? What a great so thing to that's, have. That's my stuff. Now, yeah. Um, yeah. the contracts are in this one? Yes, in 60. Okay. And over 60. Yeah. And over 60. Mm -hmm. And I think I made, yeah, I did some research here. I, you sure and did. <laughs> a lot of notes. <laughs> She's got an awful lot of books, and you've got Mom Magic. Mom Magic is um, a brand new program that I just developed. I'm super excited about it. It's, um, it's a five-part online parenting program. Wow. Five modules. Uh, see if I can remember them all. The first one is um, getting clear about your parenting style, because we're all different. Mm -hmm. And because um, I don't want to tell people how to be. Oh, you got to no, come from where you are, right? Yeah. And um, the second module is called um, Susan's Backtalk Blocker. The third module is Susan's Tantrum Stopper. <laughs> The fourth, the fourth module is, um, I love this one, um, no, um, what's it, something about, oh, homework happy hour, no wine included, <laughs> W-H-I-N-E. Oh, oh, okay. But play on the, play on the happy hour, because you want to make ha yes. homework happy hour, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last one is um, the uh, Susan's Harmonious Home something like that oh. and um, and that's where I have I share the contracts again in, in that program um, lots of um, different systems to get the family flowing like you have everyone knows mm -hmm. that they're supposed to do the di when they're supposed to do the dishes yeah. but how to come up with really fun ways to engage the family so that you're working together I have a family mission statement in there like a business would have a mission statement yeah yep and I have a family um, how to do a family meeting and and, and um, a forms for doing your own family meeting Wow. And even have a thing where you can print out your, you write your mission statement, um, you print it out, and you can download it to the computer, and then you can put it in with beautiful font, and then you can get a frame, and you can have your family mission statement hanging up in your kitchen or in your living room. And when people are fighting, you can say, is that what's on our mission statement? We love and adore each other all the time. Are we loving and adoring each other now? So this is awesome. Wow. It's five modules. They're 75 minutes each. Comes with a full manual. It's all online. And it comes with a private Facebook group that's exclusive for the Mom Magic members where they get one-on-one -on -one with me. And once a month, I do a Q&A with Susan, group coaching call. Wow. Where they get to come and be with me. And it's all included in the program. It's that's awesome. Amazing. It's super fun. And I have brought in over 50 people so far into the program. Um, and they are loving it. And they're hopping in the Facebook group. They're like, my kid just did this. And someone's like, have you tried this? What does Susan think? <laughs> you know? So what a we're great yeah. idea. And I've got dads in there. Aww. It's so funny. I have this one dad, and he's like, mom, magic is for dads, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's adorable. That's so it's so cool. that's really fun. That's super, super fun. You know, um, when I became a mom, Mm -hmm. I asked my own mother, do they have a book on how to be a mom? Mm -hmm. And other than Dr. Spock, which right. was, you know, it's... Dated. It's, yeah. 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 Um, there wasn't anything. 
And other than play dates, yeah. you know, where the two moms or the three moms or four moms get to sit and talk mm -hmm. and watch the kids play, but talk about how do you handle this mm -hmm. and when do you do that, you know, which is really important. There just wasn't anything. No. You had you to make it up. You yeah. can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. There's plenty of help. There's there's oh. so much help. Um, but you know what is? I want to say this. It's I have people come to me and they're saying I'm so confused. There's so much help that I don't know what to do, where to go, or who to ask for help. Mm. Can you help me figure that out? That's so you've gone a, to the extreme. Yeah, I mean, people are like uh, should I? Do, do I need to go to therapy for this? Should I get the book that, that talks about attachment parenting? Should I get the one that talks about conscious parenting? Should I um, be the tiger mommy? You know, the, there's, there's a book about the tiger mother. You know, how am I supposed to do this? And especially if you didn't like the way you were parented and you're trying to redo it. Yeah. You're kind of putting it together. And in a way, we were lucky because we didn't, we had one, I had, you had Dr. Spock. I had um, T. Barry Brazelton. He had a show, the baby only the baby knows or something, and I used to just wait for that to come on with my baby in my lap, going, "Oh no, I don't know it. The baby doesn't know it either." But you, I loved him. He was so gentle. And then he had, I had his big book, and I and I would open the book, and okay, when the baby does this, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. And now they're three years old, and they're doing this, and he had an answer for everything. Developmental psychology, loved it. Wow. But um, I, but now there are there is so much conflicting information mm -hmm. out there, and. What I say to the parents is, you know, or the mom usually, you know, like, well, what do you want? I want to have a loving relationship with my child. I want my child to respect me. I want my child to listen to me most of the time. I'm not, you know, crazy. I know that most kids are going to ignore their parents at some time, but if we could just have 70% listening, that would be really, really good, right? I want to be able to have a conversation that's meaningful. I, I want them to live through high school, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, um, I want to exactly. launch them. I want them to be happy, you know, okay, if my kid isn't college bound, but they can work and be a successful human being, I want them to be successful. I don't want them to get caught up in, in with a negative social group or drugs and alcohol and, you know, put their life in jeopardy. I don't want my daughter to be pregnant when she's 15 or 14 or 10 or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. early these years. I really want, I want my kid to be a well-adjusted person. Okay, well, if that's what you want, I can show you the way. And that's what they want to hear. That's yep. what they need to yeah. hear. I got your back. And, and you, you know, know, we worry right. about the other influences. Yeah. We try our very best. Yeah. But the, you read about so many kids who can't cope with peer pressure mm -hmm. and are, um, are so depressed yeah. and feel like they have nowhere to turn. There's so much suicide. I mean, it's yeah. very scary. And on the flip side, there's a lot of entitlement. I was working with a family um, a little bit back, and they, have, they were very wealthy. Um, and they were giving their 21-year-old, who was in college, $800 a month just because. Oh. And I'm like, can I come live with you? You know, <laughs> that's good money. <laughs> and he didn't want to go back to college. And um, well, should we should we lessen the money? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> should we take his phone away? I'm like, no. <laughs> you want him to get really depressed? Take his phone away. You know, he needs his friends. But yeah, and the phone is fifteen dollars a month. But you could lower the allowance. Yeah, and say get a job. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> get a job. Yeah. You know, you're 21 years old, you don't want to finish school, you're not living with us, and you're not living in our basement until you're 40, sorry. But they were, they really didn't know what to do. They had, and you know, you take a family history, it's like, well, yeah, he was like that when he was 13, 14, and 15, and he hasn't grown up yet. Yeah. Because they've just rescued, rescued, rescued. So, you know, sometimes mm. parents feel so guilty that they give, 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 give too much, yeah. and it backfires. So having a coach or somebody to talk to can help you. It hurts to be a good parent. You know that, right? I mean, oh, when you yeah. have to tell them yeah. no, and you see their little faces or their big faces be sad and mad, and you just want to say yes, but you know you have to say no for their safety or for whatever other reasons, it's it breaks hard. your heart. It, it does. does. But you yeah. have to have your heart broken a million and gazillion times as a parent in order for you to turn out a good kid. Yeah. There's no way, and if your heart isn't broken, 
you're not then you're going to have a kid who's out of control and who's going to mess up as an adult absolutely yeah boy Holy cow. A lot of things to think about out there, okay? But there's hope. There's yes, there somebody is. to call. <laughs> and she's wonderful. <laughs> she's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, this is just, this has been wonderful to have you here. It's been delightful. I knew it would be yeah. an amazing thing. And this is just some of what she has. Okay, go to her website. It's right there. And she's got, oh my goodness, she's just got all this stuff, you know, all kinds of approaches and systems. Yes, I do. But there's nothing better than talking to her. Yeah. That's the best thing mm -hmm. to see. I'm accessible. It's so funny. I, I had an email um, last week. Are you a real person? <laughs> Because people get email, they don't know if you're yeah. a robot or something, right? Yeah. I'm like, I am so real. Want to talk? Here's my phone number. Give me a call. I'll talk to you for 15 minutes. You'll, I'll prove I'm real to you. You know, I'm, I'm accessible. Yes, I'm not one are. of those people that um, you have to get through a gatekeeper to talk to me. People but are afraid sometimes. You yeah. know, you, yeah. speaking of robot. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Say goodbye to explosions, tantrums, and silence. Green robotic communications? Yes. Please don't speak to me that way. It's disrespectful. There you go. I used very few words, which I, I was green. I saved my energy. And I said it like I was a robot. Gotcha. And I have no energy around it. And I'm Teflon. And you can't get under my skin, little child. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just repeat it. Please put your tongue back in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Please take your hand off your hip. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please don't roll your eyes at me. That's rude and disrespectful. Thank you, sweetie. Okay, is that good or bad? That's that, that's my method. Okay. That's my method. <laughs> because I don't believe in timeouts. I don't believe in sending mm -hmm. them to their rooms. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It doesn't work. I want to teach my children how to behave. Just like I put your napkin in your lap, mm -hmm. get your elbows off the table, um, don't make those funny noises at the dinner table, right? Right? It's all right. about manners. And, and disrespect is just manners out of control. So we need to correct them rather than punish and parents tend to punish because they don't know what else to do but if you just let your expectations say well that's not that's not appropriate in a calm voice not in a mad voice because then mm -hmm. you up the ante and everybody starts getting upset and screams the and yells at each other exactly stuff, yeah but in a correcting with a thank you and with an explanation <laughs> and a validation i know you're upset sweetheart but please don't speak to me that way it's disrespectful I love it. Would you that like means to try I've it? done some things right. There you go. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I told you it'd be a good show. It's been a great Aww, show. Thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, you can get a hold of her. She's real. She's there. And she'll answer the phone and the email. And uh, every time I finish a show, I like to do a quote. And I found a couple to close out our show. Children will close their ears to advice, but remember that their ears and eyes are open to example. You were talking about that. We need to be an example. And then, of course, Dr. Seuss. Now that, <laughs> I'll have to read Dr. Seuss. But he said, adults are just outdated children. So the things that we use with a child, sometimes we can use with an adult. Right? You bet. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot. I know I did. And we'll see you next time here on From This Corner TV.